This video is intended primarily for people who are new to the RSpace inventory system and who'd like to learn more about the steps you should take when you first get started. I'm going to log in as a hypothetical principal investigator on one of our demonstration servers. As usual, when you log in initially, you're brought to the workspace of RSpace. But if you're an RSpace Enterprise customer and you have your own server, sometime between mid and late September of 2021, this new inventory tab will appear on your interface. You can click on that at any time to go to the new inventory area. And from here, you'll need to learn how to use the system and how to set it up in such a way that will be useful for your lab. The RSpace inventory system is primarily designed to store samples at the lab level. So it makes sense that the person who most wants to really find out about setting up the system will probably be the principal investigator, the RSpace lab admins, perhaps the system administrator or an inventory manager if you have one for your lab, or really anyone that's a power user or interested in lab-wide organization of your samples and materials. So let's take a look at some of the primary steps that you might want to follow to get started working with the system. Well, the first thing you should do is go ahead and review the entire walkthrough video that's available at this URL. You can get here in the help system of RSpace, and then from here you can scroll down and you'll see a quick link to the walkthrough video that will show you most of the features of the system. That's always a good idea to start out right there so that you can get started using the system as quickly as possible. If you'd like to, you can also consider scheduling some training time with myself or one of the other product specialists, and we can walk you through the system and help you get up and running, working with your sample tracking and your inventory and equipment management as quickly as possible. Okay, so once you've got some idea of how the system is working, the next thing you'll want to do is go ahead and set up your top level containers. And the way that you'll do that is in the navigational tree and in the sidebar or control panel over here, you'll see that you can choose to look at either samples or you can choose to look at containers. If you're new to the system, this list of containers will be largely empty. The first thing you'll probably want to do is set up your large scale containers, so also called top level containers. And these will be things like your rooms, your main freezers, your primary storage areas, sets of shelving, cabinets, the sorts of things that everybody in the lab will use. And then once you've set those up, you can then encourage the individual users to make their own sub-containers within that container. So as a reminder, to make new containers, you're going to say create container. And if you're making one that's going to be a top level container, we'd typically recommend that you set it up so that it only contains other containers. It's likely in science that you're not going to leave your small samples laying around uh, just uh, outside of a, a sub-container in the freezer or in your lab. More than likely, your top-level containers, things like rooms and freezers, will contain mainly just containers, and inside those containers will go your users' samples and subsamples. Okay, once you've made up your containers, we'd recommend that you use actual photographs of all the different containers to uh, make it easy to recognize those visually. So you can do that for any new container by clicking Add Image. And in this case, I'll just go ahead and add a, a demonstration image but we recommend that for the most part you might want to use your phone or a camera to make actual real photographs of real containers so that it's fast and easy for people to be able to recognize them and that will help them find their way around in the lab particularly if they're a new user in your lab who is still learning their way around all the different locations and understanding how your materials are stored Okay, once you've made your top level containers, your next step is to go ahead and work with your lab mates to design and create your most important sample templates. So sample templates in RSpace look like this, and they're what you use to create your samples. Sample templates can be easily edited, but they must be made initially from an existing sample, at least currently. So if you don't already know exactly what your sample will look like, what we typically would recommend is you'll go to the Create menu and you'll say Make a New Sample, and you'll choose initially the simplest type of sample that we offer, which is just simply called Sample, and this will act as a starting point for then building your template. So once you've made a new sample, you can say Next here, and then you can go ahead and... Uh, say next again and save this. There's really no content or no data or no information at all in this dummy sample that I've set up. And the only reason I really made it at all is so I can then press on to say create template. That's going to turn your basic sample into a template. And then once you've done that, you'll be able to take that template that you've just made, 
you'll be able to find it in your templates area. You'll be able to select it and say edit. And this is where the real work of building a sample template occurs because now what I can do here is I can enter various different sorts of data that will then be present in all of my samples. But most importantly, I can go on to say add new field and then I can choose these different field types to create new fields for building my samples with exactly the kinds of metadata that I want. This process is very similar to the process of building a form in the ELN area of RSpace. If you've built forms before, this process should feel quite intuitive for you. Red re would recommend that each lab would build some collection of base templates that almost everybody in the lab will use. But then you should also go ahead and encourage your users to go ahead and build their own samples to as well to represent things that just they use in the lab. The next thing you'll want to do is that if you have large volumes of legacy data from existing sample tracking systems, what you can do is you can convert that data into CSV files if it's not already in that format, format those files using instructions that are listed in our help, and then you can bulk import those CSV files to create large numbers of samples quickly and easily. For more information on this, we'd recommend you go to the link here that you can see inside the help area and that will walk you through the process of creating a CSV that's properly formatted and then show you how to import it to make large numbers of samples very quickly. And this is a good step for allowing yourself to get started quickly using the system if you have legacy data from some existing inventory system that you've been using in the past. Okay, step five then, make sure you actually start using the system. So. Using the system aggressively in the early weeks you first get started is quite important and we recommend that you'll take the opportunity to work collaboratively with your colleagues in order to create the kinds of consistent conventions, best practices and definitions of samples and subsamples that will make your lab efficient. So make sure that you tweak those templates as necessary to capture exactly the right kinds of metadata that will be most useful for your particular field of research. And then finally, step six, this is also very important. We need your feedback. If we don't get feedback from you, then you can expect that you won't necessarily see the kinds of features that you want in future releases. We're really just getting started with the inventory system and we know that there are lots of other features that will ultimately be useful for you that aren't in the system yet. If you'd like to know more about what we're going to build, you can go to this link. And this again will, will take you to the help area. And here you'll be able to see our roadmap in the form of a Trello board. And this roadmap is quite extensive and detailed. You'll be able to see in here all of the features that we've built already, but you'll also be able to see all of the new features that we have planned for subsequent releases. We need your help in prioritizing these to help you understand what sorts of things will be most useful for you and what you'd like to see in the next releases of the system. So in order to do that, make sure that you contact us either through the online help system or you can email us or there are actually other ways that you can provide feedback directly through the inventory area of the help system. Okay, so that really represents the key steps you'll need to walk through when you first start working with the inventory system. If any of this is unclear, we'd recommend that you either go ahead and look at the full product review video that's already available or you can schedule some time with me, Rob Day, to go ahead and have a live webcast to help you better understand the steps you should walk through to start building your inventory system and get started integrating it with your ELN as quickly and efficiently as possible.